Hey everyone, I wanted to cover another video here on how to use some fun and interesting tools in Serpens. I also wanted to share the add-on creation template that I was able to release uh, for the Serpens add-on. And you can find it if you go to the Serpens inside the add-ons, you can load add-ons. And it's right here. So you can download the blend file and if you open it up, you're going to get the main node graphs as you can see on the right here. And while I'm trying to explain um, another feature, I'm going to be using this just so I don't have to worry about setting up all the interface. And we've got things like end panels, options, and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about setting properties today uh, using a lot of the Serpens copy operators and copy property functions. And we're just going to focus on something simple today. I, uh, I'm not I'm not a pro at programming, but I do know that you can use Serpens to your advantage, other than having to come to your info panel every time. Now, some cool things about the add-on creation template is I allow you to toggle aggressive logging, and you can clear the info log. You can clear the console if you've got stuff typed into it, like if you're trying to figure out variables, you can clear that back down. Also toggle the system console and you can clear it as well. So this is a really handy add-on all on its own and it, it's built to help you program and to help you prototype as you're trying to figure out stuff on your own. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So I've got, I've got the template created and I've already got it compiled and we're going to make use of a toggle renders button. So as you click the button, you're going to cycle between all the render engines. Um, between Cycles, Eevee, and Workbench. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to go to the Panel 3D View Port Editor. And all you need to do, we're going we're gonna to actually control spacebar to show just this window. And we're going to recreate what I showed there. And I'm just going to take um, a button that's already on that panel, and I'm going to copy the entire frame and just, you can do a control C or control V, or you can do a shift D, and then I hit the Y button to bring it down. And I can just make the next column down, go to the next line. And so now this is a whole nother button line when I compile. And rather than calling it toggle aggressive logging, I'm just gonna call it toggle renderers. So all we need to do now is repurpose this button. Right now it's using a Serpens operator that I've already made somewhere else. We're just going to clear that. And I just added in a new operator. So you can just go Shift A. And I just use the S key and start typing in OP for operator. And then I just bring one in. I've already named this one Toggle Render Engine. And we're going to go ahead and just bring it inside this graph here. Now I created a property as well. And so even though we're going to copy and use a property from, from the render engine, I'm going to store a property to be able to cycle. And so I'm just going to call this which render, render engine number I want to use. And I just hit the plus button to add it. And when you do that, it usually starts out with a string. And I just change the type to integer. And then we're going to go ahead and grab a getter. And a property getter. And notice how on the attach to, you can pick what exactly you're attaching this property to. I leave it on scene most of the time. And all you really need to do once you bring it in is you need to use a scene context. And this looks intimidating when you first use it, but all you really got to do is grab the active scene. And then I hit Control H to bring it down. Nice and easy. And we're going to reference this render engine number. I set the minimum value to zero because it I'm going to call zero cycles, one, or zero EV, one cycles, and two workbench. It really doesn't matter. I'm just picking arbitrary numbers. So I, I want to set a minimum value so it doesn't go outside that range. And then I'm going to reset the value down if I do go above it. So we're going to, we're going to get the value when the operator is in, or when we run the operator part of the node. And I'm just going to go in and bring in a uh, math node. 
and the math node's got both flow and integer results, and we're just going to add. We're going to add a 1 to this tag value and then rewrite it into the same node using the set. And you got to just, I like to duplicate the scene context and not have to continue using multiple outputs. Keeps things a little bit more clean, in my opinion. And so now we've got setting the render engine number. So every time we increase it, it's going to add one. Now I want to make it stop it at two, um, and I want to do stuff at each one of the numbers. So I just I'm just going to make use of a couple of if if else programs and bring these over. And what's nice about the if else is you can continue and do another if, and I can continue and do another if. So if we're going to call this one if zero, if one, if two. And then an if greater than two, we're just going to revert the number back to zero. So I can actually just duplicate over this this active scene. And let's uh, bring these out a little bit, and we'll give them a little bit of room. And condense this down. And what's nice about this is the structure is going to be similar for most of these. So I want to look at this number and compare it against another number to continue on. So add in a compare node. And it'll accept data. So we're just going to bring in an integer to compare it against. And for the first one, it's going to be integer 0. And bring that guy in there. So I'll box select all these duplicate down set this to a one and notice how it's already set to equal make this a two duplicate down and make this a um, I want my I want my tag to be on top for this last one because I'm comparing my top value to my bottom value. So the property is going to be on top. And if we are greater than two, then we're actually just going to set the value. So I can grab this set and duplicate it. And that's, that's what we're going to do for the true on this one. And instead of setting it to a value of one, I'm just going to grab this string here. Duplicate it down. Uh, we'll bring this in here. Set it to a value of zero. So now when I run this operator, basically if it gets above two, it's going to reset back to zero. And I need to assign this operator now within my serpents button. So toggle render engine, and then I can compile. So this doesn't do anything other than reset the property value. But now we can actually make use of the copy properties. So back to previous, I'm going to right click on here and copy this serpents property. And then control space to come back in here. <coughs> and we're going to use a set property node. And I just paste that in when I right clicked and copied it. And it, it's, it's also being attached to a scene. So I can just continue using the active scene context. And it didn't grab everything that it needed when it copied it, but it did grab um, the essential information about what engine am I going to be using, and I'm setting up an engine. And if I were to try to run this now, so let's just go ahead and do a true there. So if we're a zero, and we'll just we're going to be new using this um, on every one of of the true statements for these ifs. So we're just going to duplicate it down. And since we already have something going on here, we're just going to add it to the end. And I can compile again, we'll go back to previous, and we've got a toggle renders. And I've, I've got a, using the same icon, we'll set that up later. But when I click on this now, 
it is it is setting to Eevee and I can click on our console here and it, it's not having any problems with it but I don't have any options I'm control space back into here I don't have any other options besides Eevee so if I do a string input I can try typing in the word Eevee so shift s shift a then s and then add in we're gonna add in a string and if I type in the word Eevee and we'll just shift and duplicate that down I'm using the exact same spelling and we're going to compile and we're going to try clicking that button again and notice how it's not changing the workbench back to Eevee and so now this is a good time to start troubleshooting okay what the heck's going on oh look at that I've been clicking this button I'm gonna click it again toggle my console again and let's just clear it to make things easier Click it again and see what shows up. Okay, so it's trying to reference in a struct an attribute, and it doesn't recognize what Eevee means. Rather, it's telling you what it's looking for. So this is the actual text we need. And that was an easy troubleshooting in the console. And you're not going to see that anywhere else. So the, the OS console is really powerful to be able to help us out. And the add-on template can make it easier to clear things up when you want to click something and troubleshoot. So we're just going to grab that text from the console. Bring it back real quick. So I need Blender EV. I'm going to need Blender Workbench and Blender or just Cycles. So Control Space to get back into my workspace. And I want this one to be Blender EV. I revert it back to Blender EV when we set it to zero again. We need this one to be Blender Workbench, and then we just need this one to be Cycles. And I do believe it needs it in all caps. Let's compile again. Let's try pushing our button. Hey, look at that. It's toggling over to Cycles. It is not toggling over the other one. But it is toggling to cycles so let's troubleshoot the console okay blender workbench not found so I'm just gonna copy that I must have made a typo oh actually um, it probably doesn't like these quotes here so we're just gonna use blender Eevee that's probably what it doesn't like. Let's try compiling one more time. So we got, we did get cycles working. So that's part of the troubleshooting process, right? So toggle our system console, clear it. Let's go ahead and push our button. Okay, we traveled over to Workbench, and we're going to EV, and we got cycles working. So now we're toggling right on through. And notice, it's it's recording the event at least here which makes it nice to show what's going on and we're actually seeing results and all we had to do is copy this property and then do a couple of things to it in the set property node and if you click this you can break that link you can paste in a different property um, I'm just going to control Z though because I had that the way I wanted and that would be nice to be able to make some icons um, that cycle between all these three so you don't have to continually I like working in a full screen workspace sometimes I hate having to click the go back and look at stuff so for this I want that the icon to change so in order to change the icon we actually have a cool tool that we can also make use of and it's called the switch icon so shift a and s and I'm just gonna type in switch icons and rather than using just this one icon I'm gonna if you're inside a frame you can control C and then control V and the new copied and pasted item doesn't live in that frame, so you can move it around. If you were to shift D on this, it lives in that frame, and it can make things a little messy. So that's just a pro tip for frames. So I want to be able to use a shift icon or for switching the icon, and I can use the same Boolean value 
off of our property to switch the icon around. And so we're going to plug this icon in here and we're going to copy this down. And this icon will just copy down. Things are starting to get a little bit messy. Um, we'll set these ones up to the top icon. And then this, this switch icons is going to be fed into here. So we're just looping them down as we go along. So grab both of these, bring them down. We'll probably need to give ourselves just a little bit more room on our nodes. So I like to organize these in a way that seems to make sense for me. Both the booleans are tying in here. Both the booleans are tying in here. And then at the bottom, we can just have another icon that says, well, if we come back to this, we're going to use the same icon as before. And we're just going to feed these in going on up, right? So this switch icon feeds into this switch icon, feeds into this one, feeds into this one. And we've got the Booleans deciding whether we want to switch them or not. So we'll set up our first icon and I'm just going to set it to, I feel like that's a good EV. We'll use this one for cycles. We'll use this one for workbench. And then I'm just going to go back to the EV. So now when we compile, we've got render engines. So workbench, EV, and cycles. And now I can work in full screen mode and toggle my render engines. All by making use of the copy and property and then setting property nodes along with our operator and button. And it's nice because I didn't have to build a panel. The add-on template really helped out with this. And it's free, so you might as well go grab it. It's on Gumroad right now, and it's also within the Serpens add-on. And it, it really helped speed the process along. And I was able to quickly make something just for this video and explain it. And it wasn't a short amount of time, but it was it was short enough. I hope you all enjoyed this and like and subscribe if you want to see more and uh, we'll see you on the next one.